Hi, my name is Chris Hewen. I'm an associate professor of finance in the Ryman School of Finance at the University of Denver. I want to talk to you today about stock screening. How can we implement a stock screen to help us find undervalued and overvalued stocks and profit off of these mispricings? First, let's talk about the goal of stock screening. The goal of stock screening is to reduce down the universe of stocks to a tractable set of stocks for further analysis. We can't do an in-depth analysis of all securities. There are thousands of them out there. But what we would like to do is identify characteristics of good investments that are going to outperform and incorporate those in a screen that is going to output a reasonable number of stocks for us to look at. So what, how do we evaluate a screen? What are the characteristics of a good screen? I've got five thoughts about this. First of all, you need to be able to identify stocks that are investable. Um, you want liquidity in a stock. You want to be able to uh, easily buy and sell it with the transaction costs are low. But not only that, if you're going to try and profit off of mispriced securities that are overvalued, you need to involve short selling. To implement short selling, you reverse the typical buy low, sell high process. With short selling, what you're going to do is you're going to try and identify an overpriced stock sell it high, and then later buy it back in the future. Short selling involves borrowing something you don't own and selling it at that high price, and then buying it back cheaper in the future to repay that loan. Another characteristic of a good stock screen is that you want to identify stocks that are going to be mispriced. You need to find criteria in the screen that are going to help you do that. Three, you also want to be able to find characteristics or criteria in the stock screen that are consistent with your investment strategy. One of the biggest behavioral mistakes that investors make is they're impatient with their strategy. They switch from what is the latest news item, um, what is the hottest investment idea, and they don't consistently follow a sound investment strategy. So you need to make sure that you're including criteria in your screen that are consistent with a given strategy. Four, you need to basically find those criteria that are going to provide a valuation signal throughout the market cycle in good times and bad, bull markets and bear markets. And five, and this is very important, you need to find metrics to include in your screen that are based on a sound economic rationale. Why should this work? And more importantly, why should it work in the future to help you identify mispriced securities? You want something that's not only worked in the past, but it's going to continue to work in the future. So let's look at implementing a, a stock screen using Capital IQ, which is one of my favorite databases. Let's use Capital IQ to implement an equity screen. In other words, we're trying to reduce down the universe of stocks to a tractable, tractable set of stocks that be, can be closely analyzed. You can see up here at the top, it has a tab. Um, for screening. And by the way, the way I got to this was I opened up a web browser and went to capitaliq.com. It uh, had my ID and password already entered in, so it logged me in. You may have to log in. Uh, when I go to screening, it shows me a list of possible screens in Capital IQ. There are lots of things you can screen on. Companies in general, you can screen on people. There are key developments that you can screen on. You can screen for stocks, fixed income securities, a lot of things, a lot of possibilities here. But we're going to focus on equity screening. So I'm going to click on that, but you can also find equities over here uh, to the left. So how do we start adding criteria to this particular screen? Let me first suggest a couple of these that are going to reduce down the number of stocks out there. And one thing that you can do is add a screen associated with market capitalization. So I'm going to put in 20,000 here and ask Capital IQ to find stocks with market caps of less than 20,000. And actually, because these numbers are in millions, I'm actually asking it to do things, um, in other words, find market caps of less than $20 billion. And you can see that here is I add that to the screen the justification for this is that these smaller stocks are actually not uh, not as followed as some of the larger cap stocks. Okay, so I'm going to use the latest number, and now I can add it. 
And you can see here that it still has a large number of securities out there, 142,423. So let's reduce it down even further by focusing on stocks that are listed on major US exchanges. And I'm going to add that to the screen. It's going to reduce it down to 5,652 stocks. We can also reduce it down by focusing on particular equity security types. We don't really want investment companies. We're going to try and get to uh, just the regular stocks here. So let me let me uh, expand this out. And I think this is good because this will show you uh, how you can actually open up the criterion and you can actually exclude particular items. So what I'm going to do is exclude a bunch of more exotic uh, equity types, limited partnerships, ETFs, closed in funds, depository receipts, and this is basically going to focus just on common stocks. Okay, so now I've got it down to 4,119. And what I can do now is I can view the results. Capital IQ is going to go and apply that screen to the list of stocks. And what you can do is you can actually e export it to Excel. You can click go here. Um, you can click on the Excel icon up here at the top. We've got too many securities though. So let me just add uh, a very simple one. Um, but before that, what I think I should do is just talk about how you can save this as a screen. You know, I can save this to my account and I'm just gonna call it stock screen because this one is extremely basic. Okay, so it saved it. I can also go back and reduce it down. For example, if I wanted, I can try and do something with the forward PE ratio. I could find stocks with a forward PE ratio less than 20. And it gives me a variety of options here. Uh, next 12 months, fiscal year, fiscal year plus one, plus two, the calendar year. I mean, it's, it's amazing how many options there are here. So I'm going to add this to the screen. It's going to go down a lot. It's going to go down to 1,617. So you know, this is a basic screen. You can output this to Excel for further investigation. Let me give you, uh, you know, that a way to investigate this further because I think this is really important to be able to play around with this and you'll learn a lot more. On the left hand side it says idea generation screens and I encourage you to click on investment management because what this is going to do is it's going to give you a list of screens that are you know already developed out there and uh, you can see screens on equity you can see um, you can search through the possible screens here in fact it's got uh, really a, a high number of them. Um, Mark Greenblatt's, I'm sorry, Joel Greenblatt's book, uh, it was, it's really famous. It's got a screen that basically uh, allows you to implement that magic formula that he talks about. You can see other screens here um, that give you high values and if you go back to low, this is in alphabetical order, you'll find a number uh, that are associated with low too. So you can see low PE, low return on assets. And if you want to go in, you can you can take a look at these. And they're really some, some fantastic screens that you can use here. Let me toss out a couple of other things in Capital IQ. Um, if we go back to that screen builder, one thing that you can look at is valuation here and search through the valuation criteria. Uh, there are a lot of estimates out there and so you can find uh, ones that are based on the estimates which are you know really quite valuable. So let's go down here and find estimates. You can see estimates down here under financial information and again we're just looking for things to include in our screen. You've got consensus estimates. There's a lot of uh, possibilities here. You've got surprises. In other words, um, what was the difference between the actual numbers released versus what analysts expected? If it's a positive surprise, the company 
has earnings that are actual of a higher number than what analysts actually expected. You can look at estimated growth and uh, just a lot of information right there. Another one is to look at what insiders are doing also. And so let me show you that one. It often helps to just take a look at uh, by searching on the web page. And you can see insider trades right here. Uh, insiders know more about a corporation than almost anybody. They work there on a regular basis. They know it inside and out. You can include screens in terms of the net number of buys, um, you know, uh, net number of shares bought. I mean, there are all these great options out here. Let me take a look at net number of buys, and let's let's click on that one. I'm going to drill down. So when I look at insider trades, what I'd like to do is you know, open these things up. And there are all these different trades out there. And the one that I would focus on is open market acquisitions or open market dispositions. An open market acquisition is loosely defined as when a company executive takes cash out of his own pocket and goes out in the marketplace and buys shares. Um, there's a famous quote where uh, Warren Buffett talked about there are many reasons why people sell stocks, but there's only one reason why people buy it. And of course, he's implying that they think it's going to go up in price. So um, again, let me just list some of the things that I've, that I've hit on. You can go to idea generation. You can go to valuation as well. Within valuation, you can find estimates. Um, you can find information on insider trades. You can also find information on industries as well. So let me go back to that uh, equity screening and just show you the industry information again. It's got industry classifications in here as well. So if you want to focus on a particular industry, you can do that. So I really like this stock screening in Capital IQ. This is something that you want to spend some time with. I need to toss out a caveat. The screen changes all the time, right? It's a website. So what I've shown you today is not going to be exactly what it's going to look like in the future. But um, over years, I haven't seen it change that much. So you can have some faith that uh, based on the information I've given you, you can uh, work to basically implement a very effective screen.